Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee, weather in five, five days in five minutes. And uh, we're waiting to see what uh, the Storm Prediction Center is going to be doing with a rather large area of severe weather risk. Uh, this morning, they uh, pushed the marginal risk line to about New York City, running up and down New York State near the Vermont, Connecticut, Massachusetts line, down the New Jersey shore into Virginia, North Carolina. The slight risk was pushed to the Pennsylvania, New Jersey border down into Maryland, Western Virginia, interior North Carolina, and the enhanced risk uh, is uh, up in much of Western, and Nor Western New York and Central New York, up and down North and South, and it covers pretty much all of Pennsylvania except the Southeast and the extreme Northwest. We're seeing that the Storm Prediction Center is putting out uh, discussions regarding potential severe thunderstorm watches for uh, parts of the Carolinas and Virginia, uh, also for parts of western New York and northwestern Pennsylvania, indicating that severe thunderstorm watches are possible, if not likely, and also for portions of Ohio, Ohio into westernmost Pennsylvania. So we'll be keeping our eyes on this, of course, as we go through the rest of this afternoon and evening. For tomorrow, a marginal risk has been put up from New England down through New Jersey into Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia, a slight risk from southern North Carolina on southward uh, into Georgia, just want to go back to uh, today. In the enhanced risk area, we have a 5% tornado risk and then a 2% tornado risk that surrounds that. For tomorrow, uh, we're looking at in the marginal risk. Uh, they're not indicating any tornado risk at this time, all less than 2%. So the main threat is going to be wind. Uh, a 5 to as much as a 15% chance of some gust of 50 knots uh, or or higher. Uh, in the meantime, as we watch the uh, radar from this morning, this is from this morning when we had that area of storms moved southeastward, uh, produce some locally heavy rains and spots as the thunderstorms weakened. And now, of course, as we check out the uh, latest radar, and this is as of 2.15 p.m. Eastern time, we're beginning to see thunderstorms in southeastern Canada and in northwest Ohio starting to fire up. And that's going to be the mechanism for probably a line of storms that develops in the next several hours across western New York and western Pennsylvania. Some scattered cells uh, down the Appalachians and also in coastal in the coastal Carolinas. But uh, much of the country today uh, is uh, on the quiet side, uh, except for a little bit of activity up uh, in the Pacific Northwest. Seeing some uh, rather impressive lightning uh, flashes here. Uh, as these storms cross Lake Ontario, I suspect there's going to be watches going up at any time now. So make sure you go to spc.noaa.gov uh, to get the latest or go to your local National Weather Service office forecast page for the latest information if you're watching this on a replay later today. Rainfall amounts are not really going to be all that much except in interior uh, New York State, Pennsylvania, three quarters of an inch to an inch and a quarter. Otherwise, it's generally under a quarter of an inch everywhere else. And across the southeast and Gulf states, it's all convectively driven. So some places could wind up with a quick inch or so. Other places will wind up with a quarter of an inch or less. Now, here's the situation as we move forward. We've got this upper trough that's swinging across southeastern Canada. That's the system that a couple of days ago was in Montana. That trough is going to be dropping southeastward, and this is why we have risk up for tomorrow, because that trough moves into New England and into the northeast. The upper low is going to drop southward into off the New England coast. This is our weather for the weekend. This is a very, for this time of year anyway, this is a very, very chilly flow of air. We'll have a second, one cold front move through tonight, a second cold front moves through tomorrow afternoon, and then behind that front, uh, we're going to have dry air coming down on uh, rather gusty winds, especially during the day on Saturday and even into part of Sunday. Uh, and it may not be until we get into Tuesday of next week before that upper trough pulls out. And even then, uh, it's uh, not really doing a good job moving eastward. That upper low actually drops southward. So that's going to keep temperatures near or below average for a while. And meanwhile, we have a ridge building right in the lower Mississippi Valley that's pushing hot air back up uh, into parts of the Ohio Valley and eventually on up uh, into the Great Lakes. We don't really foresee any uh, forecast issues this weekend unless you really are not a fan of cool air. The one thing I would watch for, uh, here's our front for tonight, uh, then again for tomorrow. This is rainfall. In the second front, it, 
it's a little uh, not showing widespread activity for tomorrow. It might be more scattered in nature or a very narrow, thin line. And then Saturday, it's a breezy day. Uh, by this time of year, you might want to call it chilly if temperatures aren't going to make it out of the upper 60s to mid 70s. Now, with the system to the northeast, there'll be a bit of an arm of moisture coming down. And you see there's some precip there up in Maine and northern Vermont and upstate New York. I don't know that that's going to make it here. It might bring some clouds Saturday night and Sunday morning into southern New England and Long Island. Might even bring a couple of showers uh, to uh, southeastern New England. But that should be short-lived, and then that goes out, and much of the day should be fine, especially from New York City on westward and northward. I don't see any real problems. By the way, that cool air pushes all the way down into the southeast, and we're going to see temperatures, again, upper 60s to mid-70s on Saturday, probably mostly low and middle 70s on Sunday, and then we'll nudge them up a little bit on Monday as uh, the coolest of the cool air pulls out. But again... It's going to have, we're going to have to wait for that upper low to pull away in order for us to get temperatures back up closer to average for this time of year, which, by the way, should be in the 80s. The Joe and Joe Weather Show, of course, will be covering all the severe weather coverage this evening at 730 uh, on my YouTube channel, Joe Chaffee. So we hope to see you then.